Departemen Statistika IPB menyelenggarakan pendidikan tinggi bidang statistika dan sains data untuk menyiapkan lulusan dengan kemampuan analitik dan komputasi yang mumpuni sehingga mampu bersaing baik pada level nasional maupun internasional. Lulusan Departemen Statistika IPB disiapkan untuk mampu menerjemahkan permasalahan nyata dalam suatu bidang ilmu ke dalam konteks statistika dan sebaliknya mampu menerjemahkan hasil analisis dan kesimpulan yang ditarik secara statistika ke dalam bidang ilmu yang bersangkutan serta memiliki landasan yang kuat untuk mengembangkan keilmuan dan atau mengikuti pendidikan lanjut dalam bidang statistika atau bidang lain yang memerlukan penguasaan metode kuantitatif yang kuat. Departemen Statistika IPB mempersiapkan kami para mahasiswanya untuk menjadi data saintis yang handal. Di Statistika IPB kami diberikan bekal mengenai cara mengambil data, menganalisis sampai menginterpretasikannya. Karena pada sejatinya semua hal di dunia ini mengantung data, tak terkecuali hal terkecil sekalipun. Oleh karena itu, dengan kemampuan menganalisis data, maka berarti kami siap untuk bersaing di segala bidang. Statistika IPB, there's no statistics without variance. Departemen Statistika IPB merupakan salah satu departemen terfavorit di Institut Pertanian Bogor. Menjadi bagian dari Departemen Statistika merupakan salah satu pencapaian terbaik dalam diri saya. Pembelajaran yang diberikan di Departemen Statistika terus mengalami pembaharuan seiring dengan berkembangnya zaman, khususnya di era Big Data. Lulusan statistik memiliki potensi tinggi memasuki dunia kerja, because statistik is a sexiest job. Good afternoon, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to this ICSDS 2021. Still with me, Sarang Simanjunta, your master of ceremony for this today online conference. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to convey our gratitude as you still remain until now. Let us continue our virtual tour. We now will meet and learn from another bright mind speaker 
through the plenary session 5 on this ICSDS 2021. Dr. Hossein Riazos Hams from Islamic Azad University, Iran, and Professor Lia Hemerick from Wageningen University, Netherlands, will be the invited speakers and the session will lead by Dr. Insinyur Budi Susetio, MSE from IPB University, Indonesia. I will read his curriculum vitae in advance. Dr. Insinyur Budi Susetio, Master of Science, is a lecturer at Department of Statistics, IPB University from 1986 until now. He is the member of National Accreditation Board for School and Madrasa, BAN SM at the Ministry of Education and Culture Indonesia since 2018 until present. His educational background, bachelor degree on statistics from IPB University at the year 1985, Master of Applied Statistics from IPB University at 1990 and PhD in Biometric Statistics from Leibig University, Gießen, Germany at the year 1997. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let us welcome together Dr. Insinyur Budi Sesetia. Okay, hey, thank you, Sarah, for introducing me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Budi Susetio, and I will be moderating this session. First of all, I would like to welcome Dr. Hussein Ria Zuzans and Professor Lia Hemerick, our invited speakers for the last plenary sessions today. And I would also like to welcome all of the participants today for the plenary session of ICSDS 2021. Before I start, I want to remind a few notes for all of us. During the plenary sessions, the invited speakers will deliver presentation in 20 to 30 minutes on each. After all invited speakers have their presentation, there will be 30 minutes for QA session. And of course, I would like to encourage everyone to participate actively during this session. Now, I would like to introduce uh, our first speaker, Dr. Hussein Ria Zuzam. He is currently as a lecturer at the Department of Mathematics, Islamic Asset University of Flamert, Iran. Based on his curriculum fitness, he has bachelor in mathematical statistics from Ziraz University of Iran and master in mathematical statistics from Ziraz University of Iran and PhD of applied statistics from University Putra Malaysia. Postdoc in statistics from Department of Statistics University Putra Malaysia. He has published his research in a book entitled Robust Nonlinear Regression Models with Application Using R. For this presentation, he will deliver a topic entitled Statistical Modeling of COVID-19 Infected Population in Iran and Far Province. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Hussein. Are you ready? Yes, sure. Hello. Okay, can you hear my voice? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Okay, thank you very much. Time is yours. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I share my screen, please? Yes, please. 
can you see my screen? Yes, you can. Okay, good. Uh, I have uh, actually one, one minute. Uh, okay, I hope uh, I, I hope this be big enough to be seen by you. Uh, over here is morning, but I think in Indonesia oh, yes. is this, this have, is afternoon I, here. <laughs> all right. So good afternoon to Malay uh, Indonesian okay. and others. Uh, my name is Hossein. First, uh, I saw you announce. Uh, just I would like to correct some of about my biography you presented over okay. in your slides. My postdoc is from Stockholm University of Sweden. Uh, today, I've, I would like to appreciate from the conference for inviting me as a, a speaker here, and I, especially my friend Dr. Anwar. He invited my old classmate invited me to present uh, in this conference. Uh, today, I would like to talk about the statistical modeling of COVID-19 infected populated population in Iran, and especially my first province. Uh, over here, I want to find some uh, statistical models for COVID-19 infected population, the daily cases of each day, both in Iran and Fars province. Fars is, a, is my province, is one of the 31 provinces in Iran because I live here and it affects directly on my vote. So I concentrate in this one. But the models you can uh, extend in any other uh, area. Uh, this modeling, regardless of external parameters, include medication, changes in, in strategy of the government, number of pe pe the people in the contact, and so many other parameters. Clearly, the hypothesis and the multiplicity of the available parameters have important implication for our models. But these are just some basic modeling. Uh, it, it needs uh, still many more uh, development. Uh, the topics I am discussing here theoretically, I have discussed with my colleagues in my books. You can find in my books. And also, the program I am using is NLR published by in CIRAN. But currently, it is archived. You cannot install directly in R, but you can get it in the archive of the R or my website. Uh, first, I show the data. This is the Iran case, daily infected new case at each date of the Iran. You will, during, uh, during the period, the, uh, the first report they give in the 19th of January 2020. In that time, there was very argue about that, that the COVID have come to Iran, but they, they reported some days late. And in first province, they reported after almost seven days, which I'm going to modeling over here. And from, I will study from the beginning until 16th September 2021, uh, it means almost around one weeks ago. So the data every day are updating, modeling, and improving. Uh, as I said, Iran report is, has some delay. Uh, then the first province outbreak of Iran was the home. It had, they have a, it's a south region in south of Tehran. They have a very collaboration with China and religious cities, so, but they avoid to guarantee that uh, to lock down the province and it is spread overall in the future. The factor that will be shown in the next, next slides, there are so many factors affecting on the, uh, the effect of this race and uh, waves they coming. They are Iranian New Year. It has a huge effect on that. It, uh, in Iranian New Year uh, start in the uh, uh, spring. It is almost in uh, March, I will show later. And there are some religious ceremonies like Ramazan, Muharram, Safar. Then opening governments had effect. Opening a school at the autumn had effect. Also president election in this year and Republic Day ceremonies, all of them because they didn't avoid any lockdown and they didn't, uh, any, didn't Obey any distance, so they cause as many problems. These are the effects we see. So this is the daily cases in Iran. And uh, this is the cumulative dates. If we have the suppose the waves comes, 
then it's going down like this. In the cumulative curves, it shows like a concave up curve going, and then it's going to be a straight. But as you can see, if the uh, speed of the virus want to stop, we must have in the cumulative a horizontal line. It goes to a straight three horizontally. But again, another waves come and it, it started increasing, going up, up, up. Now this is the recent, the last waves. This is the mortality rate, the death rate in Iran. Also the cumulative curve. Uh, but over here, if you look at the mortality rate and the daily cases between the 100 to 200, look at this, this is the Iran data they have reported. It does not have any wave, but from the death rate, they report it has a wave over here. First, I was thinking maybe it's because the cumulatively they are sum up and they're here and increase. But I asked from the doctors, like my cousin is a doctor, I asked him and said uh, the re data report is wrong. So they, they are very arguments in Europe about the government reporting wrong data. So in this modeling, this uh, report, uh, modeling of this daily diseases in Iran for me is not correct. So I'm not modeling that, but the, I tried to be modeling this uh, mortality rate. So this is the problem. But the first province uh, is more accurate. This is the first province. I'm going to model this. This is the daily new cases and also the cumulative. Again, we see the S shapes, which they are going to be uh, stable after the wave. But again, we see, we, we see many increases. I want to model these increases. Now I have, I have zoomed this curve only first 20 days when the uh, waves come, it could be controlled. I bought it in first this one and discuss about what happened. Uh, and this is the mortality rate of Iran. Uh, this modeling I am using actually is some Gaussian models in some literature events in 2020, they have uh, developed this. They have added some uh, stochastic uh, parameters to their model. Also variance heterogeneity stochastically again to their model. Uh, but I haven't done that. And in my model, I have to do some correction. And also like this, when we want to find these waves, we can use EM algorithm. This is the future I have to do. and. Introducing some nonlinear regression models. I am using, uh, this is the logistic growth curve, general logistic growth curve. I have modified, and this is the last model over here I am using to describe the skewed curves. I am using this one because some of them, they are skewed. And for a skewed curve, this is a skewed type normal because it has, in, first I was using this one, but because it has integral inside, when I combining them with the other models, it causes some problem, computational convergence. It's not easy to find the derivative and gradients of the parameters, so I'm avoiding this one. I'm using this growth logistic curve. And for symmetric model, as in the literature, uh, I will make it bigger. I'm using this Gaussian, and this is the Gaussian with a vertical scale because sometimes the, we have a stable variation of the disease, so we might have some vertical scale also. I have added here. Now, I go to the first data for modeling. Uh, here, uh, this is the overall all. These marks are the events that happen and causes the wave. I want to discuss about this one. So I first, let's zoom in the beginning. As you see, this is the beginning. These are mark eight Iranian New Year after 30 days. And let's concentrate. This is all farce in my own city. This is first 20 days, the waves come and then it started. As I said, it was, in Iranian was last month of the winter. When winter finished in Iran, we have two weeks holidays. So in these two weeks, 
to lock down and control the virus. But the problem is people in the two weeks holiday, they all start traveling. In my city, for example, in Fars province, the center is Shiraz. The people travel from Tehran and other, uh, like all other cities to Shiraz. Before that is not much virus, but during the this holidays, they didn't, many people asked to lock down the city. They didn't lock down the cities and they spread to Shiraz. Well, I'm, my working city is four hour times far from Shiraz, but it's just a working city. But during the weekends, we don't, I didn't travel, but many people travel far from here. And they go to Shiraz, they get virus, and after the two weeks holiday, they come to my city. So it, two weeks is safe to do anything, but after two weeks, like it, it is a danger again to get the virus. We observe directly this what happened. So this is Iranian New Year at the 30th date. This is eight. And then it takes two weeks to finish the, uh, these holidays. And after two weeks, this is, as you see, this is 30 day, as the 44 started another way. And also government in this time, because they had a one month lockdown, everything we faced with many uh, financial problems. They, start, they said, okay, the office workers should have a start job. And after that, again, we faced with some increase. Then they tried to control it. They did some more lockdown, but until Ramazan, Ramazan, they said, oh, it's a religious day. We have to do our ceremonies. They opened it again. In the middle of Ramazan, we say some increase again, some decline. And but in the aid of Fetr, Fetr uh, the last day of uh, this is Muslim aid, uh they opened everything they said they want to do the ceremonies praise and so on and af uh, in the beginning after every two weeks we could see the effect two weeks after a defeat you will see an, a very sharp increasing started see is very it was very huge effect after ramazan it started and it faced with some very outbreak. It was very problem. It takes three months again to control it. We faced with bankruptcy over here. I have a music school. I have, the government announced me you have to close it. I had many debt. So every time I was modeling it to announce my students, okay, this day is dangerous. Don't come to a school. Uh, another day they ask us to close private classes then do the public classes and so on. So it directly affected on us, but we had to make a decision. So this is why I'm concentrating in my first ones. After that, again, the two months of the, another ceremonies of Iranian comes. I have marked this. And also the autumn comes, it was the opening of the schools. And then we face with another very high, very high outbreak again. And um, so far, after two years, we have this space. So every of them are going to find model for them. This uh, van is skewed. I'm using logistic care, and the others I'm using the Gaussian because they are symmetric. Uh, all of them are uh, using the NLR program. My, these are the model definition, and this is the first one, the first 20 date of the wave in Fars province. Uh, these are the model. This one is just Gaussian. This is Gaussian with, with the vertical shift. I am using this one, and for forecasting purpose, I was doing this in the beginning. If every day when the data comes, I put inside and do the model care. And then we try to forecast from this model. Uh, we said that if the lockdown continues in six days, the infection could be declined completely. In six days, they could control everything. And during this time, 70 more, only 70 more people would be infected, and totally 114 people would get the disease. Using the forecast, government could calculate the cost of the lockdown and make decision about managing this situation and the cost as well. Uh, we know that the China have done same management in that time. We see the China finish in one month. We expected this to happen here, but this not happened. And they didn't lock down completely and the other waves comes. 
So we are going to combine all of them, aggregating all the models. Eight waves have been observed so far for first ones in daily infected people. Uh, modeling uh, is performed with three approach. The first is to separately fit model for each of the waves. We had eight models. Then we internal, internally sum some of them. I'm doing I'm at this last two one because this is a steady, a steady state during meeting the waves. We have some constant vibration of the virus. And then I sum three of them, two of them one times, and then three of them. This is one approach to, to get to the steady state or use the vertical shift. And then merging them all of them together. Uh, these three of them, they are, I have done the modified form of symmetric Gaussian, Gaussian with vertical shift and uh, modified of a generally, generalist logistic model. The fifth wave was not symmetric, so I used the general, generalist logistic model and the rest I used Gaussian model. Moreover for, moreover, for forecasting purpose, we have different scenarios to managing, managing as we see. At first, if we assume that the so society again is going to be locked down again at today and stop the spreading of the virus, the Gaussian with vertical shift parameter is without vertical shift is fitted. And then we do the forecasting. And the second scenario is like before, if we don't lock down the cities, and because the period of a steady a statistic of patient, for this case, again, the shifted Gaussian, we need with the vertical shift. But because the, the, in the end, I will show because the, uh, this model is, they are summing and the tails, they are summed with each other. So we don't need to do to the second, uh, second one. These are all of the feed one by one I have fitted. As you see, totally, uh, this is the combination of two waves, last two waves. This is merging three waves and some over the model. And the final model, this is the final model with 26 parameters in a nonlinear form. Uh, I have used a nonlinear regression with robust methods, actually. And this is the final fit. Now, let's see how it fit. This, these are the models, 11 model totally nonlinear regression with the parameters. Let's see the fit, how it's going on and how it forecast the beginning. So I will zoom in this beginning area. Uh, the fifth, uh, fifth one, it has, it was the Gaussian. The first three one, the, because the first three one, they are very close together. The third one have covered the first two one. These are the two waves in the beginning I have, and then I add up all of them together. The tails, they are very close to each other. So it has covered it. Maybe a stochastic parameter I can add to remedy this one. And Totally for forecasting purpose. In the end, look at this. Now we are in day 570, and if we do the forecast under 670, around 70 days from now, two months, uh, still this curve will fix in 122. This is not going to zero so soon until the next two months. If this continues, now started vaccinating. Vaccinating can decline the it, but next this from tomorrow, the schools open, maybe it cause another waves, maybe another ceremony. This is just a theoretically, but if this lockdown continues until next two months, we have the fixed vibration of 120 patients. Hospitals have to be prepared for this. And totally uh, still 22,000 people will be infected. As I explained, if they have been locked down the first 20 days, they could finish it in almost, uh, how much I said, uh, only a few people, but now still 
for today they have to face the 22,000 more patients. So the, this is the wrong decision about this matter causes so many problems that we hope the lockdowns can there. And if we do exaggerating and I continue to see when it's going to finish, of course, this is not, not correct to do that, but just exaggerating model. I have drawn anti uh, more two years, 1,200 more days, and it goes to 30 people per day. The result, of course, will be affected by some more external factors. And although the estimate is outside the range of the regression line, we, in the regression, we are not allowed to do the forecasting outside our range of the data. It, but in nonlinear regression, it is OK. It works uh, in a short time. It works. But however, if we want to do exaggerating for next two years, it goes to a, state, a steady a state for 30 days, uh, for 30 percent per day, people. It was for the first province. Uh, uh, I will discuss here. As can be seen, first three models are covered into the third one because they are very close, and the thirds they cover up each other. Only the parameter is the made of the model three of the original fit was close to the uh, final combination. Uh, more as the more study is still required to add the stochastic seriali and variance time dependent stochastic should be added to the model as in the literature. The more directed rate modeling can be forecast similarly. I will do it for Iran. For Iran, Iran data due a wrong reporting, the model will not be correct, but with the zooming over last waves, maybe we can do just the last waves. The STD state after caused the virus to spread between the people, and if the society distance uh, break by another religious ceremonies, a school opening will face with the another huge wave. Every time new waves are larger than the previous one is very dangerous. At this time, all people are under first vaccination after one and a half months. We have to look at the data again and observe the unit. We have fitted the data by a smoothing a spleen also. It's under study. There are a few solutions to find the change points in the Iran data I will show. EM algorithm, a smoothing a spleen, numerical derivative root finding, uh, I will do for Iran. And if uh, I want to do for Iran, this is the Iran data. This is the mortality rate. As I said, the Iran data is not, not correct. So I just concentrate on mortality rate. I will do some comparison between first means the mortality rate. The green one is Iran. After day 300, see Iran and first is same. It shows again some problem in the, even in the mortality rate because the number of patients they report is high, but the mortality rate is low. So again, something is wrong reported over here. But anyway, if I do the, I have to find the inflection point, I do the numerical computation of the first and the second derivative over here is we can see that when the derivative comes okay. from Mr. Hussein, negative. you have five minutes left. Okay, uh, okay, sure. And a few minutes, I will finish. Uh, so these are the inflection points over here, 190. Around this area, by, uh, is, it has some uh, variation and this point. All of them, these are the waves of Iran, again, for each of them separately. But still, when I add up them together, I cannot achieve the convergence. So I will stop here. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope if later on, if you have any problem. OK. I will, I will be... OK, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hussein, for your excellent presentation. Uh, the next, I would like to uh, invite and introduce our second presenters. Professor Lia Hemrick is currently as a associate professor at Biometrics Wageningen University in Netherlands, 
from 2005 and until present. And then she is a Master of Science from Leiden University, Netherlands, and then Master of Science Mathematics from Leiden University, Netherlands, and PhD of Ecology from Leiden University, Netherlands. Main subject is ecology, mathematical biology, survival analysis, and differential equation. Her presentation will be entitled Estimating the Rate of Split of Olive Quick Decline Syndrome Caused by Celella Pastidiosa Subspecies, Osa in Paclia. Is it correct? <laughs> Professor Leah Hemrick, are you ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Time is yours, please. I will try to share my screen first. Yes, please. Okay, let's take a look. This one, I think. Share. So can you see it now? Yes, we can. Yeah, but it's not correct yet, but that's no <laughs> problem. Let's try and start there. So now it's correct. Okay, um, so uh, today, I will try to tell you about the another disease, but that's not harming us people, but it's uh, harming uh, all kinds of other things. And uh, it's just that um, uh, because I think that this disease is not so familiar to you, I will start explaining what it is. So in uh, the late 1900, uh, uh, 1800s, the, uh, there was in uh, the US a new, um, disease found in grapevines. And that was uh, uh, discovered by Newton Pears and it's called Pears' disease. And what you can see is that it uh, harms the grape, uh, the, the grape leaves and then uh, also the yield. And in 1980, it is also that we see something like this in citrus. And it's also a chlorosis, so the, the leaves are uh, also uh, uh, affected. And then from then on, it goes a little bit fast. And then you see that uh, in 1993, there is a, uh, the, the, the CVC uh, agent for causing it, the, the disease is Xylella fastidiosa. And in 1998, it was also that the Pierce's disease is found to be uh, um, by the xylella species. Then in um, uh, xylella is uh, sequenced, and then we think that we are out of problems, but no, then it starts. So uh, we see that uh, uh, in olives, uh, xylella can do a lot of harm. And you see here one olive tree suffering from uh, olive quick decline uh, disease the syndrome and then uh, we see that the leaf is scorching and there is a desiccation of twigs and branches and the, the tree is uh, destined to, de to, to die and it gives in this region in Italy a lot of losses uh, on uh, because of the fact that they, the, that region is olive based and so because of the fact also that it are family orchards and uh, the trees are already centuries old it is a uh, really a uh, big loss. So what we see there is that the vector uh, that uh, will uh, give you um, uh, that, that disease, that uh, the, the olive tree will get the disease from it, is a spittle bug. And uh, that uh, vector is uh, found throughout most of Europe. But beforehand, it was not uh, infected by Xylella fastidiosa, but now, it is, and so the female migrating behavior and dispersal is a short range, but uh, as uh, is always through with all kinds of insects, they can hide in all kinds of uh, clothing and vehicles and have a long uh, range spread then. So you can imagine that it can be a lot of, let's take a look because I now have to go the previous one, a lot of uh, trouble in Italy. And you see that in the boot uh, of Italy, it is only in the small 
uh, uh, corner in the southeastern part. But it is spreading. And uh, it first uh, was identified in Gallipoli, that is a harbor. And uh, from there it spread. So let's take a look further. This is how it looks like, and this is at closer look. And then we have that uh, there are already many models developed, just like for COVID, but uh, it's just that uh, not a lot of people do it spatially explicit, and there is always a susceptible um, uh, infected and uh, recovered model also that you can uh, do here. And then there is also a network model, but no models were analyzing the shape of the invasion front or the rate of spread, even though the data is available. So let's try to solve this problem by using the big data. And we don't have any idea what to do yet, but we'll just go on. So we have data. We have data from 2013 to 2018. And what you can see is here, you see Puglia, and you see how it spread, or not how it spread, but how the sampling program was set up. And all those points in green in, in that uh, maps that you see now are where is sampled in that year. So this is really a troublesome data set because the sampling is not really uh, done every year at the same place. And you, you cannot see how it's spread because of the fact that the last years, there's only one small strip of the map sampled. So that was a problem. So you see now the number of samples with increasing distance from Gallipoli. And you see that uh, that is for the different uh, uh, years a lot uh, a lot different. So that's a problem. Now, what is the shape of the traveling invasion front of Xylella, Fastiosa and Puglia? And what is the rate at which this front moves? And what is the width of this front? That are the three questions that I'm now uh, trying to answer in this presentation. So what we have is this data. We have the uh, different columns and we have uh, um, a lot of rows and some of those rows just have a lot of uh, NAs, so we have to remove them. And so we get only 300,000 rows after removal of the not available. But the, let, let's go to the columns and that is the number, then the longitude and the latitude and the result. And the result can be that Xylella is absent, which is a zero or oh, negatives. And uh, when Xylella is present, then there is a one and there I, that those I call positives. And then we have the day, the year and the month. So that's what we were left with. But if you put those data just in a program and try to figure out the, the, the shape of the, uh, the wave front, there, there is not, not, nothing that uh, came out of it. Uh, and so we had, uh, a kind of uh, um, uh, way of dealing with the information in it. And we wanted to have uh, four times of information sharing and two temporal cutoffs. And the in information sharing could be that you say, if it is already infected, then it stays infected. Or when, uh, when it was not infected now, then it was not infected before and uh, uh, combinations of those two, and then, um, or, or none. And then uh, we have the data transformation because we have uh, the April to April year, or we have the January to January year. And so that makes eight data sets to uh, look at. But um, I just uh, go through it now with not uh, going uh, with all data sets because of the fact that we are uh, trying to get at uh, the result. So uh, then the number of positives and the number of measurements were uh, uh, figured out in 
concentric rings with one kilometer distance from Gallipoli. And then we had uh, the uh, proportion of positives and that was what we were going to fit a model to. Then this is the data and these are the models. We have deterministic models, namely, uh, namely a negative exponential and a logistic function that is called, uh, that, that, that is just uh, having a certain shape there and a certain parameterization. But, uh, and then we have also a negative exponential, but it is a constrained one because we say that we start, uh, we, we uh, have uh, in the uh, center of the disease, we have uh, that they are all infected and thereafter it gradually goes down. And the Hill function is giving us that also. And then the scatter around those deterministic models can be described by different uh, stochastic models. And we first thought we have count data, so we do, uh, there is a success or not a success, and then we have a binomial distribution. But then we found out that the, um, the over dispersion was in there. And so we also tried a better binomial. Uh, when we look at the uh, results for the different years, and the total, then if you look at the two sides of the uh, table that I show now, you see that the one for the binomial is always uh, having a, a smaller, um, a larger AIC than uh, the uh, right hand side where the uh, beta binomial was uh, fitted to it. So the beta binomial is by far the, uh, the best way. And so we have here three different ways of looking at the different years. And you see that uh, we have the logistic function at the left, the, better, uh, the uh, constrained negative exponential in the middle and the Hill function at the right. And you see that all those uh, uh, years are really differently estimated. And then, we essentially want to have the rate at which the um, disease spreads into the country. So what we now assume is that we have a constant rate of spread per year. And then we uh, just look not at separate years, but all years together. And then we figure out what uh, the, the, the rate of spread is uh, in there and whether that is a good way of doing it. So what we have now is uh, then you look at uh, the different years in the right hand side of the, uh, the, the, uh, the plot there and you see that then all those uh, things are giving you that you see a constant spread. And we know that it is not constant if you look at the data but this, this is because the data are really cumbersome and uh, really not uh, good sampled. And so what we then have is that the uh, uh, speed at which the front is going is about 10 kilometer, uh, kilometers per year. But then we want to lo look at the width of the front. And so we have this kind of uh, shape function. Then we have the 0.5 and the, the 0.05 and the 0.95 uh, uh, um, horizontal lines and then you can see that this is the width for between those points. And if we do that for the logistic, then we can find out a relationship for the, uh, for the distance. And if we fill it in with our estimate, it is 100 kilometers. We can repeat that for the 1% and the 99% uh, uh, the, um, uh, horizontal lines, and then we have 160 kilometers. So it seems that although the spread is an, uh, 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 on average 10 kilometers per year, there is a real uh, big front that is having um, only a small proportion of olives infected. So 
We have uh, now for discussion the first analysis that estimates the shape of an invasion front for this uh, um, bacteria. And then it, it was not a, a trivial task because of the fact that the sampling data were so difficult. And because of this, we have simulated the sampling process, but I didn't tell you about it, but you can read it in the paper that is uh, uh, underneath this slide. And we uh, we figured out uh, also, um, yeah, if, if the uh, assumed point of origin was not Gallipoli, but something else, then we could also figure out uh, what then would be uh, the, the result. And it, uh, we discovered that Gallipoli is the most uh, uh, likely source of it. And that uh, the, the best rate then is uh, the um, 10 kilometer per year. And the width is between 100 and 160 kilometers. And this knowledge on the spread of this disease can at the management of the decisions in controlling the disease, because they are rowing the olive trees uh, precautionary sometimes, and that is uh, one of the things that you uh, yeah uh, uh, you can you can now see uh, how how can we do that how can we um, have a ca quarantine zone in that country. So this is the last slide and thank you for your attention and uh, thanks my students and my co-authors okay okay thank you very much uh professor lia for yeah. um, your excellent presentation uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, i think we are very lucky that in this session uh, dr hussein and professor lia uh, talk about very interesting area, statistic area. For example, Mr. Hussein talked very much about modeling in regression, nonlinear regression. And then uh, Professor Lia uh, talked many things about sampling, data transformation, modeling, and many, many other things. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to QA session. Before we start, I have a few notes for audience. The questions to be delivered by clicking the right hand, or you can also submit a question via the chat room. Please deliver the question clearly and briefly. And I hope before asking a question, please mention your name, your affiliation, and mention the presenter to whom you would like to ask a question. Okay, let me check first. Okay. Um, there is a question for Dr. Hussein. Let me read. Okay. It's on your expertise. Can you predict or forecast when the spread of COVID-19 will end, yeah. of course, in Iran, right? Please. Mr. Hussein. Uh, yes, uh, I see the question also. Uh, everybody asked this question from me, even my students, because it affects all of our lives. And directly it affects in my own life. It, it depends on a lot of parameters. We cannot say just, uh, I can tell it about my own province about Iran and what will happen in the world like I have uh, and locally it depends also we have to do locally a study we have to look at country a study but the parameters important parameters I can say is first vaccinating how the vaccinating going on and the effect of global warning global warning uh, government policies about the how to lock down, how they have budget about this, and religious idea in my area is in, very important, and also the new versions of the viruses. All of this, they have a huge impact on that. Uh, vaccinating, like in my country, in my area, I did my vaccine, second vaccine last week, and my wife, he, she is going to do the vaccine next week, and many students, they are going to start the vaccinating. And the type of vaccine is important. For example, in Iran, 
we have faced with many sanctions. You see many, vi many viruses comes, and we have very problem in ordering vaccine. It has just started. And also because some religious uh, ideas, they, are, they have stopped it until now. Uh, we are using Chinese vaccines you know, far mostly, but we hear uh, WHO, you know, they announced the emergency using of the vaccine in the beginning. And Qatar, you know, Qatar country, they did the vaccine in the beginning, 50% of the population, but they couldn't con control the pandemic. And they stop it. So they go to another vaccine. Maybe such thing happened in Iran or maybe not, I don't know. And the religious idea is still, we encourage many people don't go to this religious, but government want to do, to have it, it has a huge effect. And locally, what you can do for yourself, my recommendation is because many people, they asking me, it affect directly our life. We lost many friends, many colleagues directly. I have so many, but locally, what you can do and what I do for myself because I have a music school and I face the bankruptcy. Every time I collect this data, every day you see the data is from yes. last week, but now I have the full data until today. Uh, you can collect the data and make decision. Now it is in danger, it's going up. So you lock down your institute or it is going down, you can do your uh, activity. Like I locked down two weeks ago, the last wave was one month ago. I stop all uh, group activities in my music school and just I do the private classes. Now tomorrow I'm going to open again. What you can do is my recommendation. The date as I show in the curve, it is theoretically for to predict both worldwide and locally and in your country, uh, it's just theoretical. You can yes forecast do by these models you can forecast. Uh, as okay. Professor, did, uh, Professor Hendrik did for his data. Uh, you can do it and you can make a decision to how to manage your work, how the government manage, manage that. But uh, the government actually doesn't listen to us. They do whatever they want to do. Uh, but in my case, as I sh show until next two months in the first program, if this continue, uh, they will face with 130 patients constantly in a day. Hospitals was full one month ago, but now uh, the some pressure is reduced, so they have more free times. Uh, they are getting better, we hope. Uh, another question uh, they asked, can I answer? They said, uh, you, have you, mean? you mean model, have you compared okay. them or no? Yes. Uh, they asked, uh, do you have, uh, have you compared? Actually, when I am fitting, if I show, uh, I'm not showing that, but if I fit the data, like with the sh vertical shift, the curve is not fitting well, so I ignore it. I haven't fit all of them for all of the models. I can see by my eyes which one is correct, which one is not. But yes, in the program, and uh, in the data parameters, I show some of them, some of the factors to compare. So we have the parameters to compare, uh, but I haven't done all of them to do. And if is it possible, I ask my question also from Professor Henrik. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Before I continue. Uh, I want to know. Sorry. Okay, okay. You continue. Yes, please. You. Will you continue your answer, Mr. Hussein? No, no, my answer is okay. finished. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before, you. is there any, someone, raise hand, please? No? Okay. Uh, very interesting with the uh, presentation from Professor Lia. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I read that in your presentation, uh, you say that until 2016, no clear sampling strategy. What, what, what does it mean? Could you explain more about this? No, it, it's just that... Uh... It, uh, what the Italians did was that they uh, uh, were just sampling where they felt that they should sample. Oh. And uh, they uh, were just thinking, uh, we have to be uh, aware where the uh, disease is. And so uh, they had only a, a, a certain amount of effort that they could allocate their sampling. And so they didn't uh, sample uh, from Gallipoli till 
where they expected it, but only uh, a little band about uh, where they expected it to be. And that's and 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 then you don't know what is happening uh, bef- uh, from Gallipoli till mm. the, uh, the the small band. And that's and 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 I can't can't blame them because of the fact that uh, if 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 money is a que- in the question, then most of the time, you, yeah, you try to uh, allocate your effort where where you think it's the best. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, I just imagined uh, how difficult to collect the data, right, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, could you uh, probably explain to us what is the sampling unit in this in this case? Uh, what what they did is that they uh, uh, looked at. Um, um, in in essence, they uh, have the sampling unit as a tree because of the yeah. fact that the trees are the ones that uh, uh, can die. And uh, what, one of the other things is that when they suspect that a tree, because of the, the leaf color uh, is uh, sick, then they uh, do a little bit more intensive looking around it because they really uh, want to know where the, yeah, wh- where the front is of yes. this invasion. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, please, the participants who want to ask questions or probably also want to discuss something uh, or comment. Still nobody? <laughs> if, there, if no one asks a question, I'm very interested I, with, okay, please, sorry, who? Uh, I had a question from Professor Laya. Okay, uh, please, this, please, uh, Dr. Rizin. This, uh, this is, uh, is it clear where is the origin? Is it from global warming or something? Yes. The origin, of it, the, the origin of Xylella, uh, we don't know that really, but um, we know that it inv- inv- invades Europe at, at certain other places also. and. We, we know that in, in, uh, it was in uh, North America and South America first as the bacteria. And so it, it could be um, uh, just um, uh, invading by uh, plant products from those countries, but we don't know that. Mm, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Yes, yeah. I don't know about this disease, yeah? Is it possible happen in Indonesian or in uh, Asian country? <laughs> what 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 do you? The disease. Uh, what you? Uh, the spread of the. Oh, the, the disease. disease. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what 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 is the the disease? Is just that uh, uh, it is um, nowadays also in Mallorca and in Spain, and it's uh, it's rather a general disease. And it okay. can attack also almonds and grapes, and uh, uh, so uh, in in uh, in Italy it's mainly the uh, the olive trees. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it can uh, do <laughs> later on. Maybe in Indonesia, okay. I don't know. But just <laughs> just <Okay>. be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please, for the participants to ask questions to our uh, speakers. Still nobody? About, the, about this yes. logistic curves. <laughs> no, actually, this area are very interesting for us. OK. Who? From Muklis, yes. Mr. Muklis? Do you want to ask directly or should I read your chat? Okay. <laughs> I think this is for Professor Lia, right? Yeah, okay. Um, yes. Okay. What I have there, it, it, what's the role of these insects in the spread of Xylella? Okay. Uh, what you have is that the, uh, the it is the spittlebug that is carrying the uh, bacteria mm. to 
the olive tra tree and then it's affected. So it's the vector for the disease. Just like the midges are the vectors for malaria, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any else, please? I have a question for uh, Jose. It's, yes, please. It, uh, yes. uh, it, it is uh, about the COVID. It's just that uh, uh, when when I was looking into COVID, I was looking into the uh, Wuhan data, and then um, uh, we, we just found that they, uh, they, they, they the reports were not so uh, good, and uh, that that the data were not really. Uh, we we think that we couldn't trust them that well, and. You already said that one part of your data you could trust more than other parts of the data. And so, uh, why is that in your country? Uh, mostly is because of religious belief in my country happening. It's a political policies of the government. But from the data, we can realize this data, as, as you see in some maybe maybe I can share again. Uh, it takes time to share again my screen. Uh, from the data, we can realize this is uh, correct or this is not correct. For us, example, this one I wanted to show uh, is mostly political issue. But you mean from the reason from the data or reason from the government decision? No, it's it 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 it's just the the data. If 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 you look at the data, then uh, sometimes uh, uh, when you are uh, trying to model it, then you see that yes. uh, if if you are uh, going to um, um, yeah I'm, I'm, uh, to to, to uh, yes. predict something, then you see that uh, yeah. it is always underestimated mortality or mm -hmm. always under something like that. But it's just that that that. Uh, although you try your best to estimate the, 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 all the parameters and uh, that kind of things, in, uh, then, then you see that some things don't look right. Mm, yes, uh, exactly. Uh, this is why I chose the first province data. Uh, can you see my screen? I have to share my screen again. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, we see. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, these two curves, I was trying to do the Iran and first mortality rate. The fourth mortality rate in Iran, the first 300 days, it was uh, very high. It sometimes it reached to 20%. 20%, you know, in COVID, uh, yeah. the mortality rate is 6%. Am I right? Uh, yes, 6%, yes. but in the source is 30%. And they said the new, new viruses of uh, uh, corona, if comes, like this delta and gamma coming, if the mortality rate is dangerous because the uh, virus has spread very fast. And so this over here looks wrong, completely wrong for now in the Iranian data. It means that they have reported a very low number of patients. And if you compare it to first, it is too much higher than the first. But then, because after 300, they reach together. And what this happened here in Iran, it increased. We know the data mortality rate in Iran after it was increased. But how the percentage is going down is completely wrong. In a statistic, it's easy to find these problems. See here, in the last two waves, we see the this uh, infected people is increased hugely is more than three times than before but how is that the possibility that the mortality rate, rate going down or again if we compare mortality rate with the number of patients between 100 to 200 uh, you see the number of patients is not increasing it is a steady but the number of mortality is high my cousin is a doctor first i tried to describe it but then i send it to him and said, is it possible this happened? Do you have any interpretation? He said, no, this disease is new before this doesn't exist. And of course, it should have followed the population yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. in a statistic. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Important yeah. is forecasting. We want to forecast. So it is important to yeah. make it modeling. 
but uh, but one can... of the things that I th I think is that the, the uh, because you uh, you have it in the early stages that you have a low mortality there in the or a high yeah a high mortality there and that that is that might be because of the fact that uh, uh, all non covid related deaths are already uh, uh, set to be covid yes yes mm. correct yes <clears throat> yeah yes uh, very interesting mr hussein uh, i think yeah. it is also in indonesian if we are talking about the COVID data, <laughs> many many people are uh, yes. don't trust to the sometimes to the data. I mean, uh, could you explain us about? Uh, isn't there any uh, special institution in Iran uh, which uh, responsible with the uh, COVID data? with the accuracy of the COVID data. Could you probably explain about how the collecting of the COVID data in Iran? Uh, actually, hospitals, they give the statistics. Uh, for me, I'm getting from the Un Shiraz University Medical uh, okay. School. They announced the statistic of the first province. Even okay. in my city, I'm living okay. in Lamert. They didn't announce anything, but first, suddenly the Shiraz announced in the Lamed we had some disease. So they had to give the correct statistics. In Iran, every city, they have created an organization, uh, the COVID control, this, they have meeting all the times the, in the government level, and they make decision about lockdown this city or open this city. But unfortunately, they don't use uh, statistics. I don't have any role in government. I'm just a senior lecturer. I give the data every time to head of university and ask him, you have meeting with them, so why you don't share with them and make decision. Uh, there are some, but in the high level, then they give uh, anything they want to do, they change it and report. And of course, they have the correct results. But Last month, many people, they got disease, the last wave. Uh, they go to doctor and doctors just said, we don't have, even they didn't have kit to do the experiment. They asked them just go home, eat drug and rest like that. And lots, lots of people, although the, and the, all the hospitals was full. Many of my students, they traveled here, for example, they had problem even with the hospital. So not only the political issue, but, all, but also naturally they couldn't give the correct uh, statistics. Many people, of course, the statistic is not inside. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody yeah. ask a question? Okay, still no one. <laughs> okay, I have still one um, question, actually not questions, but, but uh, we need a recommendation from Professor Lia, as you know that uh, we are from IPB University. IPB University is Bogor Agriculture University. And then yes. most of the uh, uh, participants are also students in the Department of Statistic. If I read your curriculum vitae, you are expert in biology, <laughs> you are also expert in statistic, mathematics. <laughs> Could you uh, recommend or describe to us how interesting the implying of the statistic in biology data or agriculture data? <laughs> yes, I can do that. If it us, you know. <laughs> but 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 I, uh, I also can make you. Uh, uh, a little bit because it's not only uh, biology that I do or yes. agriculture. Right. Uh, I also have a publication about Neanderthals okay. and uh, how they how they uh, um, uh, could uh, could not survive despite of us. But but it's just that uh, what what I like about uh, life sciences to model there right. is that uh, most of the time uh, in agriculture there are applications where you can uh, uh, go to and then the, the need for predictions or uh, getting a way of uh, uh, 
uh, how things are really working or um, uh, are, are the main goal for me. And it's just that uh, I, tr I try to figure out then with all the tools in my statistical and mathematical toolbox mm -hmm. uh, to, to get the best answer to the problem. And one of the nice things uh, about uh, my current research is that uh, I'm now cooperating with somebody who has a large data set on Amazonian trees. And then we can figure out uh, uh, how their phenological um, uh, uh, events are related to climate change, uh, because it's already a, da a data set that started in the 60s and is still up to now. And the phenological traits for the people that don't know that, in this case, are uh, flowering, uh, um, blooming. No, it's not it's flowering, fruiting, mm. uh, uh, leaf fall and leaf and making new leaves, for instance. And then and then you can see how the timing of that uh, is dependent on different covariates. And that I do with survival analysis. for instance. OK, thank you very much, Professor Lia. I hope what you explain, it can be motivated us uh, to increase our uh, research in biology, agriculture, ecology, and, and so on. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anyone? Okay, please, Mr. Anwar Fitrianto. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Budi Susatya. I just want to say here, uh, as a chairman of the committee uh, of the uh, conference, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, Professor Leah Heimerich uh, for giving you effort and also uh, time and also contribution in this conference, as well as to Dr. Hussein uh, for your contribution in this conference. Uh, so I, I think because of the pandemic, uh, uh, we can see you here. Uh, maybe if not because of pandemic, maybe uh, this is not easy to see you, uh, to give uh, your, uh, I mean, to have your talk in the conference. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Dia and also Dr. Hussein. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Anwar. Okay, because there is no any other questions, I think the session will be quicker ended. And then uh, I still with the participants, if anyone to ask again, no? Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we come to the end of our part of UA session. Uh, we would like to say thanks again to invited speakers for the informative and interesting topics and to audience for your participation. Hopefully the presentation and discussion will be beneficial uh, for everybody. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you again uh, for Mr. For Professor Lia and Mr. Dr. Hussein for your presentation. And then thank you for everybody. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will back uh, return the right. time to MC. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Please stay here, Dr. Hussein. Uh, we will have a token appreciation uh, to Prof. Dia and to Dr. Hussein. I back return to Ms. Sarah okay. as MC, please. We thank you very much, Dr. Sergio, already leading the panel session five. We thank you much, either Dr. Hossein Ria Zosans and Professor Lia Hemery for the very enlightened sharing this afternoon. I would like to welcome Dean of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, IPB University, Dr. Barry Juliandi, that already joined with us this afternoon among your very tough schedule. As well, I would like to invite you, Mr. Dean, to deliver the token of appreciation to both Dr. Hossein and Professor Lia, either to Dr. Budi Susatyo. The screen is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, Miss Sarah and uh, honorable guests and participant that already come here. Allow me on behalf of the IPB University 
and the organizing committee of this international conference on statistics and data science 2021 to give a token of appreciation first to Dr. Hussein Ria Zosams and uh, please accept our appreciation for your kind and enlightening contribution to this event. And next, I would like also to give a token of appreciation to Prof. Leah Hemrit. Thank you again for your presentation and kind attention to this conference. And lastly, I would like also to give our token of appreciation to Dr. Budi Susetyo for nice moderating of this uh, session. Thank you very much for all of you and have a good evening tonight. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, all honorable person. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the heart beating and session because we will give a word. First award, we would like to deliver the special text to the board parties that have gave great support to make the conference happen. We thank much for your support, Indonesia Statistical Association, EC, and Statistics Higher Education Forum for start for supporting this international conference. To all of you, chairperson, that lead session by session of the parallel session during the whole ICSDS 2021 program. Due to the pandemic situation, the committee will send the token of appreciation to all invited speakers and the certificate to all of you presenters through your email address. Thank you for your consideration. And as additional, to all of you presenters, the committee will send t-shirt to your address. Please make sure you give your current and active address. Second, here you are. The list of best winner of ICSDS 2021. We go first to the award of best presenter. The award of best presenter goes to Dr. Aswi from State University of Makassar, Indonesia. Congratulations, Dr. Aswi. And second, one is go to Dr. Arizo Baheri from National Population Research Institute of Iran. Congratulations. We invite you, Dr. Aswi, either Dr. Arezo, to be on camp. And we still have one other best presenter. And it goes to Meishel Johansa. Meishel Johansa from IPB University, mm. Indonesia. Congratulations to three of you. If you are still in this conference, we would like you to be on cam and we would like to hear a short testimony or lesson learned that you got from this ICSDS 2021. First from Dr. Aswi, you have two or three minutes to uh, say something, lesson learned or a testimony about ICSDS uh, program. Okay, thank you very much. Uh... It is a great pleasure for me to attend this amazing international conference. This is really, really well, well um, organized. So I would like to thank all the organizers for kindly inviting me uh, to this important event. And thank you for this appreciation. I remember also last year I got the appreciation as the best audience and I really um, 
very very happy uh, grateful that today got uh, i got uh, as the best presenter and thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Aswi, for a very nice testimony about our ICSDS program. We would like to welcome you, Dr. Arizo, from National Population Research Institute of Iran. Oh, you are not there. What about Meishel Johansa? Are you with us? Okay. Then we thank you, Dr. Aswi, uh, for uh, the testimony. Ladies and gentlemen, we now go to the award of best participants. Best participants of ICSDS 2021 goes to Luh Putu Widya Adnyani from IPB University Indonesia. Luh Putu Widya Adnyani. If you if you still in this conference, we would like you to uh, open your cam. Congratulations, Luputu, and we would like also to congratulate Muhlis Ardiansha from IPB University Indonesia. Very active participants, Mr. Muhlis, if you still with us. We would like to invite you to open your camera. And you are pleased to give a testimony or lesson learned what you got from this ICSDS, starting from you, Putu, Widya. The time is yours, two or three minutes. Unmute your microphone first. Your microphone is still on. Yeah, okay. Um, I confuse what I have to say. Uh, this is so, uh, so <laughs> I don't know what to say, but uh, um, thank you for the, uh, thank you. Okay, just thank you. I'm really happy. Thanks. Thank you, Putu Widya. And it is now your time and your turn, please, Ardiansia. Yeah. Uh, I will say Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, I am get uh, appreciate from. Uh, International Conference on Statistic Data Science 2021, and I'm also say thank you. Yeah, we thank you, Nilu uh, Luputu Widya Adiani and Mr. Muhlis Ardiansia. Congratulations, winner! We are happy for your winning. Honorable guests, beloved students participants, ladies and gentlemen. I now humbly give the floor to the rector of IPB University for giving the closing remarks. Actually, he would very much like to join us this afternoon, but because there are some works that cannot be delegated to others, this afternoon, Professor Arif Satria will deliver his remarks through a videotape. Here he is. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Honorable President of Indonesia Statistical Association, Honorable Chairman of Forstat, Forum Penyelenggara Pendidikan Tinggi Statistika Indonesia, Honorable Dean of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, IDP University, Honorable the Chairman of International Conference of Statistics and Data Science, Honorable all invited speakers and all participants, participants from Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh, Iran, Nigeria, Australia, Uganda, Australia, and Korea, Netherlands, United States, and Japan. And ladies and gentlemen, 
it is my great honor and to greet all of you and to particularly extend our warmest welcome, especially to distinguished invited speakers and all participants in International Conference on Statistics and Data Science 2021. It is organized by Department of Statistics and Data Science, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Resources, IBP University. In this conference, we had the invited speakers from the United States, Malaysia, Uganda, Australia, Korea, Netherlands, and Russia. And we had 60 presenters, both local and international. The international presenters are from various countries, such as Japan, Iran, Qatar, Bangladesh, and Malaysia. And we had invited speakers and presenters. There were about 300 of academicians, researchers, and postgraduate students joining the conference. Congratulations to the head of the Department of Statistics, PANA, and all of steering organizing committee. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference is one of the most interesting conference in 2021, focusing on shaping the future. And this conference is organized to be a place for experts and practitioners of statistics, analytics, and data science to meet, for getting to know each other, to exchange ideas, and to collaborate towards further development. As we can see together in recent years, we saw many disruptive technology and innovation such as virtual reality, artificial technology, robotic technology, internet of things, and etc., which each of them generate a lot of data. It can be seen in terms of volume and from various sources. And there is a flow of data every time from year, month, day, hour, minutes, second, or capture in real time. And data flow is divided into various types, such as numeric, audio data, video data, location data, which all can be recorded. And this will have an impact on how we will formulate many things related to new science, new regulation, and so on. And people used to say, uh, who controls oil will rule the world. But now, whoever controls big, big data will rule the world. We can say data is the new oil. Data is very, very important and powerful. It is not only about the technology, but also change in our mindset. Mindset, So we can change our behavior. And with so many data we already have, and we will have in the future, we need uh, some ways to utilize data or this new uh, oil as optimal as possible to reach a better future. At this conference have been provided unique opportunity exchanging experience, sharing good ideas in the field of statistics and data science in this 4.0 era. On behalf of Iowa University, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all stakeholders, especially for the organizing committee, who have been working hard to organize and review paper for this conference. Also, would like to express our gratitude to moderator and invited speakers. And to all participants, last but not least, for your health and fruitful experience. By saying, Alhamdulillah, International Conference on Statistics and Data Science 2021, Shaping the Future, is officially closed. See you on the next conference. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We thank you very much, Rector of IPB University, Professor Arif Satria. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our meeting. Again, I'm sure that you will agree with me that we have had two days of lively discussion on the different aspects of statistics and data science through this ICSDS 2021. We thank you very much to all the speakers, panelists, resource persons for the insightful information and experiences you have shared with us. And of course, to all of you students and participants, we thank one and all of you. Thank you very much, students. And we would like to apologize for any inconvenience during the conference. Congratulations also we would like to deliver to the Department of Statistics, IPB University for their efforts to ensure the smooth running of this meeting and who had made our online international conference present and fruitful. Congratulations, Department of Statistics. And without any further ado, now 
let us go and say goodbye to each other. God bless each and every one of us. See you at the next ICSDS. Bye. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.